Oh, criminals in this town used to believe in things. Honor. Respect. Look at you. What do you believe in, huh? What do you believe in? I believe whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you a stranger. How to intrigue your audience? A question that I have asked myself many times over. How to capture the viewer's attention and not let it go until those final credits reveal? Indeed, a very tough question to answer. Intrigue is a very tricky thing. To begin, we need to understand when you should first capture interest from your viewer and how can you keep it floating, rising. In this video, I am going to be looking at a couple of examples of intrigue done in a great way and ones where it's not done at all. Now before we continue, if you like this content, subscribe and hit that bell button. Do it now! Many different directors review and handle intrigue in their own different ways. Martin Scorsese usually starts his movie through the monologue while introducing us to the main character. My name is Jordan Belfort, not him, me. Christopher Nolan most of the time will place us right in the middle of the action and let us figure out whatever the fuck is happening. While Tarantino almost always begins his movies with a really long conversation between one or two main characters. I'm through, never again, too dangerous. I know, that's why I always say I'm always right, too. But you forget about it in a day or two? Yeah, well, the days of me forgetting are over. The days of me remembering have just begun. This is so you understand that there isn't really one absolute way to catch the viewer's interest in your movie. One important thing they have in common is that they are either introducing us to the protagonist, like these three, or the antagonist, like these. But the important question is, which is better, introducing your hero or introducing your villain in the intro? Now introducing your protagonist in some way or another in your opening scene is the basic way to go for most filmmakers, and it works. It makes sense that since the movie is based around him or her, that they appear first. Although introducing your antagonist in the beginning could sometimes be more interesting. Think The Dark Knight. This movie we're talking about has easily one of the best opening scenes in any movie of the past 20 years. Why? Because not only is it filled with action, intrigue, and chose one of the most amazing characters ever created, but also, in only a few short minutes, tells us everything we need to know about the maniac we're about to witness. First up with this. You have any idea who you're stealing from? You and your friends are dead! He's out, right? But shows us that he doesn't care for his crew. A psychopath. And then this. What happened to the rest of the guys? Which shows us again that he is ruthless. And then this. What do you believe in, huh? What do you believe in? I believe whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you a stranger. Which tells us that basically he's been through a lot and does think of himself as strange or weird. This scene from Inglorious Bastards is about 20 minutes long. It is the longest opening scene of any Tarantino movie. And yet, despite the fact that it is this long and it's like 90% dialogue, it is the best opening scene of any Tarantino movie. Because although it does take its time to set everything up, and it is pretty slow paced. It gives us again one of the best introductions to an antagonist. Very much competing with that of the Dark Knight. Now, now, I'm not gonna sit here and compare these two and find out which one is best. 
They're both great in their own way. I've already covered why the Dark Knights is great. Let me talk about this one. The scene is basically about a French farmer during World War II without family of three daughters going about his daily business who gets a Nazi colonel visitor to his home. Très Monsieur Lapadit, je suis le colonel SS Hans Landa. Also known as the Jew Hunter. The farmer, Lapadit, invited Landa into his home and introduces him to his daughters. And then they sit down facing each other sideways. Now the scene does have one little bit of a dumb flaw. When Landa and Lapadit sit down to have a, a conversation, supposedly in French, Landa comes up with some dumb excuse as to him being unable to continue in French. Monsieur Lapadit, je suis au regret de vous informer que j'ai épuisé l'étendue de mon français. Continuer à le parler si peu convenablement ne ferait que me gêner. Cependant, je crois savoir que vous parlez un anglais tout à fait correct, n'est-ce pas Oui, de ma foi, il se trouve que moi aussi. Puisque nous sommes ici chez vous, je vous demande la permission de passer à l'anglais pour le reste de la conversation. Anyway, they sit down to have a conversation that takes right about 14 minutes to finish. With every single detail being so, so important. From the moment Landa grabs the daughter's hand and asks for milk, the sadistic fuck, until he starts slowly manipulating Lapadit to expose the Jews he has hidden in his basement. Because from the beginning, Landa knew the truth, and all he wanted was to mind fuck the man. Even though he could have went in with his men, tore apart the place, and probably found the Jews, he chose to go the slow way, because he is a sociopath. He continues the conversation, trying to get Lapadit to call out his name. Monsieur Lapadit, are you aware of the nickname the people of France have given me? I have no interest in such things. But you're aware of what they call me? I'm aware. What are you aware of? The Jew Hunter. He is super proud of it. And he keeps manipulating the guy until he gives the Jews up. Now the reason why this scene doesn't ever lose the interest of the viewer is because from the beginning, when Landa arrives, that is by itself something that would attract the viewer a little. But it doesn't really stop there. It easily could have. Landa went in with his men, tearing apart everything and shooting everything up. It would have been like any other opening action scene. But what Tarantino did was continue very, very slowly, building everything up with every little bit of detail, slowly grabbing the viewer's interest more and more until the time came when Lapadit gave up. We were basically in his same position. Hans Landa became a scary, manipulative figure. And what the viewer wanted wasn't to stop, but to continue until they see this evil being get decimated. I'm gonna give you a little something you can't take off. The Dark Knight and Inglorious Bastards both show us exactly why introducing your antagonist in the beginning could be a lot more intriguing than your protagonist. But what about not intriguing your audience? One example out of a million that I wanted to look at is, and forgive me for this, Interstellar. It is undeniably one of my favorite movies. But it does have one flaw in its intro. That being is that it starts out well enough, 
with the yes a little cliche nightmare but still was working in the movie's favor. Now Coop wakes up and finds Murph, his daughter. She tells him about seeing ghosts, foreshadowing the later part of the movie. And that's all still pretty promising as an intro. Until Coop gets up to the window and it reverts to this documentary in the future. Mostly we had dust. I guess I can't describe it. It was just constant, just that steady blow of dirt. We wore uh, little strips of sheet with sometimes over our nose and mouth so we wouldn't read the so much of it. Well, when we set the table, we always set the plate upside down, glasses or cups, whatever it was, upside down. was absolutely unnecessary and made me furious that someone as seasoned as Christopher Nolan could make such a dumb mistake. They're talking about the farming and how it was back then. Old Merv is talking about her dad and the problem with that is that later on in the first 20 minutes of the movie it becomes almost completely useless. Because during that time, they were showing us how these people's lives were like in our near future. But the people in the documentary already talked about how it, was, how it was like before. And that brings us to the most important factor in this, which is show, don't tell. That's the thing about that intro. Christopher Nolan could have completely cut out that whole segment and, and it wouldn't have changed a thing except making the beginning of the movie stronger. So to conclude, intrigue should be a very well thought out part of your screenplay. You need to capture your viewer's attention, and that is actually simple enough. But you also need to keep it going and building up all the way until you get to your climax. Your viewers should keep augmenting their interest in your movie. That is why the perfect example of all of these I have found really does intrigue me all the way through is Inglorious Bastards.